Yes. So I'll go in detail about interfaces today. Like what is the purpose of interfaces? Like you had asked a question. Like if it is empty, what is the use of it, right? So yeah. it's a very important concept interface, okay? It's one of the most un what do you call that? Underrated. Yeah. You know? We have these actors or sportsmen who are very underrated in their team. What do you call them? Yeah, underrated. underrated, right? So interface is one of the one of the most underrated concepts in OOPS concepts. Like people just think of it as they are something to do with empty function and you implement the empty function. Yeah, this is a part of it. Okay. And whichever class which is implementing it has to override the abstract methods, right? So I'll just do a warm up with what is interface. So let's start with the warm up of an interface. So let's create an interface by the name shape. Never program in capital. It's like you're yelling at the compiler. Interface shape, okay? Okay. And uh, this shape has two abstract methods, namely void area and void perimeter, okay? Okay. Now, these methods by default are public and abstract, right? Yes. This is their default. So every every method in an interface by default is abstract and public. So I don't have to write it. But I know it's it's at the default nature, so I can skip this, correct? Yeah. So if you if you want to write it, you can write it. If you want to skip it, you can skip it. And every data member in an interface is de by default what? So if I have a float pi, this Pi is by default what? Is static and final, correct? So all the classes which are implementing this interface shape will have to use the value of 3.14 as it is and you cannot alter that value. It's final and static, correct? Yeah, so by default the data in an interface so you can start preparing the nodes parallelly. So yeah. interface, the data members are, are by default, or correct. So you cannot a static plus final. And the methods are methods member are methods are by default are public plus abstract, correct? Okay, gotcha. So uh, let's sir, I had one question. Yeah. Uh, Like if you have, you are talking about over data member or member func member method. Let's say, just start, like, variable, any rank, any variable yeah, so this is a variable over here by the name pi, correct? Yeah. But okay. No, you cannot change. If you are giving any data member in an interface that is by default static and final, you cannot change the value of this data member. Neither can the value be changed and n number of objects which, are be, which will be created by the classes using this interface, they all will have to use the same value. Okay, so now this interface, now what this, the job is half done. Now what do we need to do? What is the purpose of interface? That you need to create a class which implements it, right? So what do I do over here? Cluster code, 
Now, what does this implement keyword under, underline? What does this mean? Implements is like you're signing a contract. You're signing a contract. Yeah. Means I will override all your abstract methods, correct? Yes. So now what to fulfill this contract, which all methods has to be overridden by the circle class? So, okay, and while overriding, if I just tried this, what will be the problem? I am narrowing the scope of this function, right? Because by default it is, and in the class it is, no, in the class it is default level. In the class it is, do I still have that video open? Do I still have? Remember this? Do you, do you remember this? Yeah, so, so while overriding, what is the rule? Either you have the same specifier or something wider than that, right? But there's nothing wider than public. Am I right? You have to keep it public, okay? And now, now what is the formula for area of a circle? Pi r square, right? So I take a variable double result and I initialize the result to pi. So I have the value of pi over there and okay, so I can pass this radius over here as an argument. So if I pass the radius as an argument over here, it has to be over here also, right? Yes. So I'll keep that blank over here. So, I'll check the radius and initialize it to some value 5 and what will be the value? So, you can take this from the user also if you want by using printf by using the user scanner class and I'll just display the result. Area of circle is Correct. Okay. And similarly, what do I need to override? If I don't override perimeter, what will happen? If I don't override this, what happens? Am I fulfilling the contract? Am I fulfilling? Is the class circle fulfilling its contract with the with the with the with the interface shape? Yes or no? So the class which does not fulfill its contract with the interface is called as abstract class. It's called as so I have to give over your abstract if I am not fulfilling my contract, correct? But here I am because I am overriding both the methods, so I'm not being an abstract, correct? So in perimeter we take the radius, the result, and we'll do what? 2 pi r. Okay, and what will we say? Perimeter of circle is result correct. Now this result is being duplicated in both the methods, yes or no? Yeah. So why don't I take it as a member of the class? Okay, so that the class can use it along with the radius also. Okay, so, so this class has two data members, rate, result and radius, so I need to provide value to it, to the radius, so I can do this within the constructor, right? So I can pass the, I can pass the radius as a constructor argument, correct? Yeah. And now both the constructor argument and the class variable is same. So I have to use which keyword? Yes. Correct. Are you getting this point? Yeah. So I'll pass the radius while creating the object and this radius will be used for my calculation. Have I understood? Yes. 
so try to avoid code duplication wherever possible you should not be having the same code duplicated so whenever you write a program and your supervisor will always review that program so it always goes to a review stage and if he sees that you have a habit of duplicating the code he'll give you a pat on the knuckle like saying avoid duplicating the code so wherever possible so here we had duplicates right this code was copied over here previously if you see yes or no so this is not good programming etiquettes this is not good programming etiquettes that we are duplicating a code so to remove that i removed all this correct are you getting the point yes so whenever i make whenever i create a class okay whenever you are writing a parameterized constructor this is a parameterized constructor right so always back it up with a default constructor so if you are having parameterized you should have a default just remember this mantra if you are having a parameterized yeah if, whether it is empty will also do but try to have a default okay so this is done so this class has implemented shape and given body to both its method correct yeah. now what is left now i'll make now one more class i'll make one more class rectangle class so you can make n number of classes which will implement so now if i make class rectangle and implement shape what is the duty of the class rectangle same thing point area and point but for this i'll require length and breadth correct yes so i'll put them as class variables correct and we also yeah. have a double result over here okay when i know my area will also be an integer because i'll be doing length into breadth so integer multiply the integer will always give you integer and the rectangle parameter will also be 2 into l plus b so let's keep the result also as integer okay yeah. and now what do i need to make first a yeah. default constructor i'll be passing the okay yeah. prefix it by public prefix the constructor by which keyword yeah. rectangle and integer length comma integer Right. Now, how do I assign them to the constructor? Tell me now. Hmm. This dot. Correct. And. Perfect. Okay. And now, which all methods do I need to override? Correct. So I'll be overriding the void area. So what will be that? The result will be length into breadth, correct? And then we have to display the result also. So let's copy this code. So what do I call area of a rectangle is? And next, what? Which function do I need to override? Parameter. Parameter, and that will be two times. Two right. times means two times means to multiply. Okay, you don't write that in the textbook, but this we are oh yeah write the multiply. Make sense? Yeah. And correct. correct. I close this class over here. Now I need to make the main class. Okay, so I'll just name it as interface main. We'll have which method in it? Public static void state. And string args. Now, which objects will I make? Objects will be of which classes? The implementation classes. Object will be of which classes? The implementation classes. So. Circle C1 is new. Circle, and I had promised I'll pass the radius, right? Yes. And rectangle R1 is 
and I'll had promise I'll pass the length and breadth, correct? Yeah. And now using Steven, I can call which methods? Get in the point and using P1, using R1, I can call which methods? Understood. Now, how do I save this program as the class which contains main is made public and program is saved by the name of the public class, correct? So I copy this. I click on save. I go to D drive. I go to your folder. I'll make a subfolder in there so that we can have categorization of the topic names. And I save this. Okay. Let's try to run this. Let's try to run this. Okay. One second, I'll just compile this and then I'll show you. Okay. It says static lossy. Okay, I should have given it double. Yeah, tell me. Um, so, like, is that like a class? Can you just leave it as an interface just as it is right now? Like which, 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 which line? Line 1 to 6. Like, is that just. 1 to 6. Yeah, this is an interface. This is the body of the interface. Which is showing that it is just having the methods uh, declaration and no definition to the methods. That is what an interface actually okay. does. It so just it gives you the. Like it's similar to a class but without the implementation of the methods. A class will have the implementation though here. Yes, perfect. So an interface doesn't have an implementation. So yeah. the next program which I will teach, I will show you what is the main use of in these interfaces. So I, this is done, compiled, let's try to run this, and see this, area of a circle of its radius 5 is how much? Area of a circle with radius 5 is 31.4, area of rectangle of length 10 and 20 is? 200 and a perimeter of rectangle which 10 and 20 is 60, correct? Yeah. Mm. So, uh, this and in the case of interfaces, Java has uh, given it a uh, extra privilege that interfaces it is, it is permitted multiple inheritance. With regards to interfaces, it has permitted what? Yeah, I'll just open a document which I have and share with you. You see this? Yeah. I'll share it with you also, okay? So abstract class I mentioned over here. Yeah. Okay. Then we jump to the interface, okay? Now why and when to use interface? Java does not support which, inter which, which inheritance? Means what does that mean? A class can only inherit from one. one, third, or one so what's the alternative for that? You can use an interface. It can be achieved with interfaces because the class can implement multiple interfaces. A class can in interface. A class can implement. Multiple yes. So if I have interface A. Okay, something in it, and I have interface B, something in it. This is always possible. Class C implements. Am I understood? Yeah. This is possible. This is permissible. A class can implement. Multiple, as many as they want. So if there were multiple interfaces, D, E, blah, 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 they all can be implemented. So if I have four interfaces, so I can implement all of them using a class, correct? 
Okay, now if the interface A has the method name 1, if the interface B has method name 2, now what is the responsibility of a class who is implementing A and B? It has to override both the methods. It has to override both the methods, right? One yeah. also and two also, correct? Yeah. Okay, so if you are implementing multiple interfaces, you have to give, you have to override methods of all those interfaces, correct? Okay, so this was an alternative for multiple inheritance. Now, what does it say? What does this say? So, can I create an object of interface shape directly? Can I make an object of shape? Can I do over here shape S is new shape? Why, why is it not permissible? Because it has all abstract methods, correct? Yeah. Yeah, now a very important point over here. What is this and what is this? Tell me. What is the, what's on line number 69? What's on line number 71? Tell me. The object on 69 and you're assigning the object its memory on 71. Yeah, so this S is just the reference. This S is just the what is this S? So reference, yeah. Just and with the new keyword you create object with a lot memory, right? Yes. Am I understood? So, the concern is you cannot use the new keyword prefix to an interface. Yes. Am I understood? But Control. you can always create a reference of an interface. This is permissible. This is permissible. Okay? Yeah. Getting the point? Yes. See, a reference, a reference. Now, what? What is this re reference? You know what is the cause of the reference, right? Uh, uh, it says that whenever it will point, it will point to an object of this class. Okay, let's let's do a postmortem of this. What does this mean? What does this mean to you? What does line one mean to you? Assigning the object C1 to the so No, no, what does line one, one line one mean to you? That you're making an object. No, you're making object on the new keyword. This is object is made with the help of the new keyword. Okay. What have I made over here? Reference. Remember this term. What have I made over here? Reference. So when when I have the class or the interface name followed by some object name that is just the that is just merely the now this is this is promising whenever c will point in the future it will always point to the object of which class so what does the reference indicate it indicates that in the future Whenever C1 will point, it will always point to an object of this class. Correct? Yes. Okay. If I do this, is it technically correct? So, if you the syntax, it's correct, but the methodology... No, syntax is not correct. correct. No, like, by syntax, I mean, like, uh, it's not like an error in the yeah, way it, it's being but okay. Yeah, so the promise is not being fulfilled, right? What did it promise? That whenever I will point, it will be to an object of which class? Circle. But now, where is it Where is it pointing to? Object of which class? 
rectangle so this will be a compile time error this will lead to what so you can only point to the class which you have mentioned over here correct yeah. okay there's a twist over here okay so you can point to the class mentioned in the reference correct yeah. mentioned in the reference or its child classes or its child classes so a parent in reference can point to a child class object remember this this is a million dollar line parent reference can point to child class Are you getting this? Yes. What, the, what does line number 10 mean? So let's say you're going to reference on line 1, so C1, mm -hmm. and uh, you have a class inside of circle. No, a class extending circle. circle class, right? Okay, see, I'll, I'll show you. I have a class circle. Okay, having public integer radius, blah blah blah, x, y, z. I have a class playground which does what? Extends okay, circle. Yeah. Okay, so you can call it uh, the, the class that are the parent Yeah, so if I make a reference of which class? Now, C1 can point to new circle always permissible. Yes or no? Yeah. This also. Yes. Correct, correct. Beautiful. This is what I wanted to know. Wanted you to know that if we create a reference, that reference can point to the class itself, which we have been using all this while. Correct? Yeah. Plus, it can also point to any of its child classes also. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. But now, there's a, there's a catch over here. Okay, there's a catch. Try to understand this catch. Public void. Okay. Try to understand this. Very simple, very easy. Okay. Now, tell me tell me, now using this C1 using this C1 now over here this C1 is pointing to which class? Circle. Circle. Now at this point, I can call which method? I can invoke which method with C1? Auto. Hmm? C1 dot Apple. C1 dot? Apple. Apple, correct? Yeah. Okay. Then later on, I make this C1 point to new playground. Possible? Yes. Now tell me this C1 can point, can call, this C1 is a reference of what? Remember that, it's a reference of? Circle. Now with this C1, what can I call? How many methods are there in the class playground? Two. Hmm? Two. Two, which all? Mango and Apple. Mango, its Mango. own, and Apple, it, it has inherited, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. See, I'll just give you a small uh, over here. Let's do a small diagramic explanation. Okay. Father, okay. Father has hundred million dollars. How many? 
and the sun has fifty million dollars. How many? Okay, father, the son, the father gives the son all his wealth. How much? Now, how much wealth does the son own? Total is now how much? Dollar. Correct? Okay, now one fine day, the father tells the son, son, please give me 125 million dollars. So, technically, how much can the father ask the son? No. Okay, morally, morally, or you can say 100, right? How much he had given him, that much only he can, he can ask again for? So, can the father ask for 125 million? Can the father ask for 90 million? Yeah. 95 million? Yes, right? 100 million, all what he had given him? Yes, yeah. no, maybe. But can the father ask for 105 million? No. No, correct? Is this understood? Yeah, so yeah. the father can only ask for how much he had given the son initially, correct? Yeah, now come back to this example. Now, references of which circle, right? Yes. Now with C1, can I call mangoes? Yes. No. Mango is sun's $50. Mango is sun's $50. $50 million. I can only call what I have given him. What have I given him? Apple. So you this even I can only call Apple. Oh, yes. Getting the point? If you if you want to call mangoes, you have to get a reference of playground. Getting the point? I have a question. Yeah, tell me. So you were assigning C1 the like like the like the method for certain class for playground. Yeah, line number twenty five? Yeah. So, would we be allowed to also call Mango because it's within the playground class? Like, we're allowed to call the playground class? No, motion. you should be allowed to call Mangoes. Yes. Because, no, no, no. Here now, the re you have to look at the reference. You're calling the method using which reference? You're calling method X, Y, Z. Look at the reference what you're using to call. Which? Uh, what is the reference? The so reference is? C1. C1 is a what type? Circle. Circle. So it will allow C1 to point to playground. Yes, because PP new C. PP parent class pointer reference can point to child class object. Remember this. What is this PP new C? The parent class can point to uh, object. Yeah. With with conditions apply with an asterisk with an and what's that? That uh, you cannot call object, uh, methods within the child. Yeah, you cannot call the method which you did not give it to the child class. Yeah. You can only call the method which you have given to the child. Yeah. So which methods has circle given to playground? So, with this C1 reference, I can only call. Am I understood? Is this clear? Yeah. What if I, then what if I want to call Mango? Not allowed with C1. So, I'll have to do, make a reference of? Playground. And I think I know where you're going with sir. Uh, with Playground, when you make the PG, like, mm -hmm. uh, Both. Beautiful. Beautiful. You'll be able to call both because it is inherited. Correct. You're going on the right track. Perfect. Because mango is inherited, right? 
Sorry. Apple is inherited, correct? Yeah. Okay, in which situation are we not allowed to call Apple using PG? Beautiful. If Apple is private because private data is not inherited. Am I understood? Yeah. So private is only private to this class circle. It is not inherited. So when it is not inherited, you cannot invoke it. Getting the point? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the crux of object-oriented programming. You have to understand these basics thoroughly. This is what they ask in the interview. In the interview, they will never ask you to write lengthy programs. 100 lines, 200 lines. They just ask you these sort of simple questions. So they'll give you a scenario based question. They'll simulate a scenario. Okay, this is class A, this is class B, this is private. Then I'm trying to invoke a method. Will it allow me? Then you have to say confidently, no, it will not allow because it is not inherited. Then they'll try to invoke, they'll, they'll try to gauge this also. References of C1 type and with C1, I'm trying to call Apple. Will it allow? Yes, because Apple, it has, it has given, right? But with C1, this is allowed, right? Yes. But with C1, can I try to call Mango? No. No, because Mango, it has not given. It's not allowed, okay? Am I understood? Yes. So this is a very important concept. You will understand this. Later on, if you go into advanced Java or the corporate level Java, you will come across a topic called as design patterns. Have you heard of it? I saw it one of the... Yeah, this is very sort of advanced level. So it's like experienced people with three plus years of experience in development. They venture out in this topic called as design patterns. I'll give you a very simple idea of it. And this design pattern, you have to master abstract class and interface. It's all, you know, Lego toys. Are you heard of Lego toys? I am a Lego master. Master? What, what have you built? Dinosaurs? So many cool things. Like, yeah, like you can just share the. Uh, is it still uh, there or you destroy all them? Uh, I, the thing is, like, uh, I used to have a 1500 piece set of just like normal Legos. Mm -hmm. Nothing for like, oh, build a house, build a car, right? So you still do uh, have snaps, snaps of them? I have a few, yeah. I'll yeah, just, just post it on the group. So yeah. design pattern is just playing with Lego toys. You just. So we had those blocks, right? You have those four dots, six dots, eight dots, right? Yeah. So how you just play around with those toys and construct a building or you construct a car. Similarly, your, these are your blocks, abstract class and and using them, you construct your design pattern. It is as simple as that. Design pattern is not something which is hard coded. It's just a you, way of how you implement your abstract classes and interfaces. I'll give you an example of a factory design pattern. Very important design pattern. Called as what? Which design pattern? Okay. This factory design pattern for this, you should know this comfort. You should know this thoroughly. Which what? What is the crux of factory design pattern? What is this? Parent class reference can point to but does it have 100% access to it? No. No. Okay. So there's, a, there's an asterisk always attached. Okay. So P, P, new P. Possible? Yes. C, C, new C. Possible? Yes. P, P, new C. Possible? Yes. And C, C, new P. Possible? Yes. No. What, what, how, how will I... The object is what has the child given? What has the child given the father? Okay, so this is not possible. But you can still call the method that the parent has passed on to. Yeah, so no, what has no we are making object of so what what is playground passing to ground circle? Nothing. Nothing. So what this is not permissible. Okay? These three, so this is full access. So using this P, I can call all the method of the parent class, correct? Yeah. You, this also has full access. Using this C, I can call all the methods of the C class, correct? Yeah. 
This is partial excess. Only those methods which have been inherited from P. Correct? Yes, sir. Now, I'll just give you a demo of that, okay? So, tell me. Okay, you do you follow Wimbledon? I'll just have a glass of water and come, Chris. I'll just take a few minutes break. Yeah, Chris, I'm back. So, let's do which design pattern are we discussing about? Yes, I'm audible, Krish. Are you there? Which design pattern? Okay, okay, sending your toys. Yeah. Okay, these are all made by you. So, I was going to teach you this factory pattern, okay? I'll just give a glimpse of what design pattern is and what is the actual implementation of interface. So, this is the actual real world usage of interface so do you follow lawn tennis wimbledon us open australian australian open uh, i don't know in detail about tennis but um, I, I know some very good players yeah so you have these uh, what do you call businessmen who give the quote on rent so people who are fond of playing tennis can rent it out and then they can play over there on weekends or in the evening, yeah. right? So uh, a tennis court primarily is of two types. You have the hard court and the grass court, correct? So uh, Nadal is a champion of hard court and Roger Federer is a champion of grass court. So Nadal's most of his titles are on clay court. This Australian Open is clay court, I guess US Open is clay court, Wimbledon is grass court. So we have the clay court is, is somewhere brownish in color, yeah, and the grass court is green in color, correct? Yeah. So if he has both the types of courts, okay, so if you want to rent out, a, this is a clay court. So clay court, the rates are let's say twenty Canadian dollars. Or well, let's let's I'll just give simple in Indian rupees. Rupees one thousand. Grass grass court is costly because it has high maintenance. Rupees two thousand. Okay. So this is the court cost. Am I understood? Yeah. So. What he does is he's made an application, okay? So people using the Android or iOS app, they can book the court, correct? Yeah. So he gives them an option, like please choose the type of court you want to book. Yeah. So he gives a drop down. He gives a sort of drop down in the app. Please choose the court type. And in that drop down, you can select whichever court option he has. So right now he has only two options. So he has what? Clay court and grass court. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then he might also give you services like uh, do you want rackets? Do you want the playing balls? Do you want umpire? Do you want uh, DJ? So if you are having a tournament, do you want a referee? So, right, he might give you those options also. So, we'll just stick to two or three options which we use. So, he says, okay, do you want rackets supplied at our end? Do you want balls also? Then, do you want a referee? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, so this option he has given. So, he says choose four. And he says choose service. And then he gives you okay. So clay court is how much? If you choose, if they choose clay court, how much is the cost added? Thousand rupees. Okay. So this is and grass court is and rackets he charge hundred rupees, balls two hundred rupees, referee three hundred rupees. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So this can be more of more of check boxes. The services can be check boxes. Correct? 
because a person can choose multiple, right? Yeah. And they, these can be radio buttons because you'll be choosing either of them, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so like this, you can design a UI using Android or using any other front end technologies. Uh, UI, we have AWT Swing. We have AWT Swing, or we can use Applet also. This will be the UI part, which we have so in our syllabus. Like, like, when I have to build a basic Java course, like, right, right? Yeah. A little bit of long stuff. Yeah, so, so we can design this. In the, when we do UI, we'll be, I'll show you how to design all this stuff, okay? So right now, we are accepting the value from the console, correct? So then in UI, I'll ask you to accept the value from the text field. Then you have this as your radio buttons. What are these called as? So this is called as checkboxes, correct? Yeah. Okay, so we'll discuss this UI later on. Okay, so the person chooses clay code and he chooses rackets. What is his total bill? Um, Okay, so simple concept, correct? Simple use case, very easy to understand use case sort of, correct? Yeah. Now, so how do we implement this using interfaces and design patterns, okay? So I know port, these two are type port, correct? Yes. So I will make a parent interface by the name port, by the name? Core. This will be a parent interface. What will be the name of this interface? And this function will have a method which will return the base price of the code. Okay, double get code price, correct? Yeah. Now, as this is an interface, this method will not have an implementation, correct? Yes. Who will provide the implementation? The okay. classes. So this is which class? Uh, play class. Play. play core. Does what? Implements. Implements core. Correct. Yes. And what method do I do? Do will it override? Uh, double the price. Correct. And so what is the price of this? So what will it return? Are you understanding? Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. When this customer logs into this UI, do we know beforehand which code he will select, which services he will select? So we cannot assume anything, correct? Yeah. yeah. Similarly, this is which class? Which is which class? Class. Grass core implements port correct yes and what will it override uh, again, again, and what will it return correct are you getting the point yeah return to class okay so i am not sure whether the customer will select clear code or grass code correct but I am very much sure the customer will select some code. Yeah. So I will make a reference of code. I will make a reference of. Getting the point? And can this reference of C1 point to new clay code? Yes. yes no, maybe. Why no? PP PP new C PP new C parent class reference parent class means interface also is the same concept. Yeah. So yes, yeah. So you just use the concept of PP new C over here. Design pattern will use a lot of this. So references of what type? Code is a parent, right? This is a hierarchical inheritance. Sort of? Yes. So, code C1 is. So, can C1 point to new clay code? Yes. 
can C1 point to new grass board? Yes. Okay. And using C1, which function can I call? Can I call get port price? Yes. Why yes? Because it's the code code. Yes, absolute. So I can call this anytime, correct? Yes. This can and it always be invoked because the parent has given this to the child. And over here also I can anytime invoke C1 dot get code price correct? Yeah. Right? Yeah, so let's yeah. let's just, just quick question. So yeah. when we let's say uh, in the second line when we do click code, right? Mm -hmm. And then we call the get code price, mm -hmm. is that gonna return to get code price that's in the brown box? Yeah, correct. It'll in because the interface doesn't have any implementation, no? It will always go to this method which has the implementation. And like the fifth line was going to point to read. Yeah, correct. So now we have shifted the reference. So reference, they keep on shifting. So if this is an object and this is an object. So if there was a reference which was pointing over here, we can anytime remove it from here and make it point over here, the same reference. So if I had C1, if I had C1, which was pointing to clay core, I can always remove it from here and put it over here and make it point to grass core. At a time, it will point only to one. At a time, it will point only to one object at any given point of time. Okay. So we are now let's implement this using programming. Okay. Should we start? Okay, so that is called as factory pattern. What is this called as? So factory, it is called factory because you will just give a string. You will just give a string. What? Clay. And this pattern will return you the object of the class. Are you, are you getting the point? So in a factory, we just, we just go and give an order. And the factory returns as the product. So if I give the string as, string as what? It will give me object of which class? And if I give the string as grass, it will give me object of which code? So I need something on the LHS to hold this. And that LHS will be of my port reference, will be my so if, even if it points clay code, my C1 can receive it. Even if it gives me grass code, my C1 can receive it. Correct? Yeah. So this is the main primary purpose of editing interfaces. So let's get going. Okay. So this is which which pattern? Factory. Factory. Factory method rather. We have factory. Factory. Factory method. And other factory patterns also. So let's first start with the interface. Interface name. Now I want you to dictate me now. Sort. And what does it have? Do I need to write this keyword? Abstract, public, get, port, price. Do I need to write this? No, it's default. It's abstract. So just public and code. Even, even, it is, even public is default. And this is returning me a type double, right? It is returning me a type double, which is returning the cost, right? So what is what can be eliminated? Which two keywords can be eliminated? Beautiful. Because by default, uh, interface will have abstract and public. Get it? Okay. Now, which class should we write to implement this? Does what? Implement score. Simply. Code. And now, what will what is the responsibility of this class? This it has to call the input. What am I missing out over here on line number ten? By default, this method is public, yeah. and by default, this method is default level, right? Yeah, yeah. And default level is narrower than public. And by overriding, we have to give the same specifier or a wider specifier, correct? Yeah. 
So what, what am I missing out over here? Zero. And what is this returning to you now? Return one thousand. Okay, it's very simple. If you understand the concept, programming is the simplest thing in the IT industry you can come across. And uh, then what will we have over here? And last code is 2000, correct? Yes. Okay. Now let's make a public class which I will have main. So let me make public class Wimbledon. And in this, what will I make? So now, as we are not using 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 not using UI, we'll have to accept the type of code from the user, correct? Yeah. And let's then do what? Scanner class. Yes. Scanner SC is new scanner system dot in, and as we are using scanner class, what do we have to do? Import Java dot util dot scanner or you can use dot star will import all the classes in the util package. Okay. Yeah. And then we need to prompt the user that please enter code type. Right? Yeah. So this we will show it via the UI, right? So we can tell him, okay, clay or grass, clay or you can just prompt it that the keywords are fixed because we have to give a string. The factory patterns demands that we have to give a string. So that string should be correct, okay? And yes. So what we can do this import type, right? Equals to sc dot. Now what can be the core type? Can either be clay or can either, either be grass, correct? Yeah. Well, okay. And I have not made a reference of the first most important thing. Make the reference for what? C1. C1. Because either, either it, whether it is clay or whether it is grass, it will always be of type? C. C. Okay. Now, the two options what we have is? So, I'll just switch. I'll just switch that, right? I, I hope you know switch case. So I'll just switch. So how many cases do I need to make? One case for clay, clay. and one case for grass. grass. Okay. Now, in if it is clay code, object will be made of which class? So and who will point to it? C1. C1. And using C1, I can call which method? And as it is, it is returning, I'll have to display it, correct? Yeah. So we will display it saying play for charges are okay. Yeah. And once we are using switch, we have to break, correct? Similarly, if it is which is grass code, then, then just change it up to grass. new grass code and what do I say? Grass code charges. Rest all remains the same, correct? Then we can have to pause statement, so if there's anything yeah, switch, switch closes, main closes, class closes, correct? But we can also have the default in the case the user. Oh. Isn't it just default? I don't think case Is it? Because from what I remember, it's just default. Okay, we'll try with both. Okay. okay. We'll try with both. We'll try with default with the case without the case. Okay. 
switch closes on main closes class closes correct you will save this program as by what name the class which contains main is made public wimbledon yeah. and you see the program as wimbledon.java correct yes so i come over here switch interface wimbledon.java correct yeah okay if you want i can make it a new folder by the name factory method by what name okay so that interface we have done factory method and this will be done java correct yeah. now let's try to run this and this is the real world implementation of what oh my my okay it doesn't have a doesn't have a case okay in yeah. the default okay beautiful still print ln print ln print ln print ln okay yeah your script will what is remaining now print ln 947 again i missed out okay okay make sense compile Are you able to see it? Yeah. Compile. Yeah. Let's run it. Okay. Give me a code type. Okay. Here, code charges are. Any other point? Correct. So this is the real-world implementation of what? Factory. Yeah. So now I so now for homework I want you to implement this interface. Which interface? Services. Which one? Services. Okay. And add. add them to this base cost and then try to get the total cost out of it okay yeah what yeah you you will do it or you want me to do it so i want you to implement this this functionality no, 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 no. you will do that right okay yeah. okay so we'll go more deeper now in interfaces so you got the use of interfaces right yeah now what is point number 2 I just shared this code with you. Meanwhile, well, I'll forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, Swish. What's point number two? Point number two. right the class the methods don't have a body because my method by default are abstract right yes exactly. who gives the body the implementation class correct yes and then what is this the agreement yes yeah, so you have to uh, so the class that is implementing the interface must override all methods. all of its method if it fails to do so it will be it will be a abstract class all right then it should be then it should be an abstract class if it fails to do so okay next is in in, in interface the method the by default abstract is data members are by default Static, yeah, an interface cannot have a constructor. Interface cannot have a constructor because we cannot create objects or interface. Correct? Yes. Okay, very good. Now, multiple inheritance is supported in Java. Yes. 
Yes, it not with respect to classes, but with respect to interfaces, it is permissible. Am I understood? Yeah. See, yes. what I'm trying to show you is this. Class A. Class B. Is this possible? Is this possible? No. Hmm? No, it's not. Not possible. This possible? You so, want interface to keep sense. Yes, one interface can extend extend multiple interfaces. Well, can we have a class that extends these interfaces? No, class will implement an interface. Okay, I can yeah. Class will this is possible. This is am I understood? So one interface can extend multiple interfaces. So if I have interface A which has void function 1. And if I have an interface B which has void function 2. Now, how many inter so, now if I have a class Apple which implements C, what should how many methods should C class Apple override? I mean if C doesn't have any interfaces, I mean any uh, methods of its own, then it's gonna have two. Which all? Uh, a function one function. And you have to make it up. And if C also if C also has something. So then you have to now this class will override how many methods? Three. Three so methods. Common. Correct? And you have to assign them all to public. Yeah, and you have to write them all as public. So if this class has to do then you have to write public Conk1 some implementation to it correct? yes oh very good ok this is one point second can a a class can extend, okay, I should have named them as x1, should have named them as x1. Now tell me, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'm framing the question. Is this possible? Is it? No. Okay. Tell me, is this possible? Class A extends X. Now, this is very much possible. Yeah. Class K is extending which class? X. And implementing which interface? A. So, this is what? Now, 
this also is possible so just need to understand the concept then things fall into place so i've discussed these scenarios over here okay so problem one interface yes fresh are you able to see this so interface animal which all abstract method is, is it having so what do we do make a class horse which implements animal and gives body to eat and sleep correct yes. and then we make object of the horse class and call the horse class methods correct yeah. okay very good now this is program to interface name is first interface correct as method by the name what this is which interface as method by name two class demo implements first interface comma second interface means what one and two then yes and main class you make object of the demo class correct yeah okay what's the name of the interface Okay, this one now. Is it permissible? One interface extending another interface. Yes. So now, how many methods are in the interface B? Fun one and fun two, correct? So now, if and this one. Interface A, interface B, interface C extends A comma B. Correct? Okay. Program five class A is having function one. Interface B, interface C. Class D extends A, implements B, C, X, Y. Yeah. It's permissible. Correct? Yes. And this program we just did the program. Correct? Yeah. So I just wanted you. to have a deep understanding of this concept interface very 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 important concept and yeah. this is what is your homework for today and i want you to implement this scenario i want you to make a parent class services and then make classes racket balls and referees implementing that correct yeah. okay and this is quite similar to abstract class also it's just that in in interface we use the keyword implements in abstract class we use the keyword extend we use the keyword so so if i use if i convert this wimbledon program using interface this all it's using interface correct yeah let's convert this using abstract class Let's convert this using abstract class. So, what changes do I have to make? Turn the interface to abstract class. Why now? By default, the method is what level? Default, correct. And implements will become. extends and now i'll give body to it so i can keep it default also correct yeah and here also extends uh, extends for i can i can remove this public but i can give it default correct yeah rest remains the same reference whose reference have you made so you cannot make a object of reference uh the abstract class but you can always make a reference of the abstract class correct yeah this would not be permissible because you cannot make a instance an object of abstract class correct yeah but you can always make a reference okay. and then rest all remain the same correct yeah so when when will i use this so 
if I have a method which has some implementation, okay? So if I have a method which has some implementation, get uh, name, okay? So yeah. the name of this, the name of this, uh, what do you call this service, the facility? So like uh, what do you call this as uh, over here we have it called hot food what do we have it named over here so you know, you know five by five football six by six football uh, not too sure. no they play within a cage sort of on a grass grass court yes. under lights five by five six by six within a small comparatively small field so we have such facilities over here that, that owner has named it as hot foot. So they charge around uh, around thousand bucks per hour they charge over here. So that would be around what fifteen dollars for you per hour? Typically yeah, sixty it's uh, one dollar sixty rupees. Yeah. So what is this returning? So over here, I have a method which has some implementation, correct? Yeah. And a method which has no implementation, correct? I have both of them. Yeah. So this I have to mention over here is abstract. It's what? Abstract. So in abstract class, by default, the method is not abstract. We have to mention the keyword abstract, correct? Because abstract class, the method can have a body also. So whenever I want the facility name, I will call this method, correct? Yeah. But I couldn't give the body to it if it was an interface. So I name I converted that to an abstract class. Get the difference between them? Yeah. So now if I want to say hot foods grass coat rate is 1000 and hot foods Hot foods clay coat rate is 1000. Hot foods grass coat rate is 2000. Now, what do I say? So, I'll say over here, correct? C1 dot. Uh, that should be outside the position. Yo, correct. Right, sir. Okay? Yeah. So, it's as simple as this. You don't. Know? Just have to use your pure common sense while programming in Java, correct? So, so, uh, sir, I am a little bit confused on this. Um, I thought we're not allowed to make uh, objects of the class. Yeah, so we just made a reference of it, right? We haven't made an object. We haven't used new over here. We haven't used new yeah. or did we? Okay. Also, if we, if we just use the currency, what the use that reference? Yeah, just choose as a reference for PP new C. Okay, fine. So this abstract class and interface primary purpose is PP new C. Yes. That is what all the design patterns use it for. But now, as we had a method which had an implementation, I couldn't use interface, correct? Yeah. So I had to use something like an abstract class which would have ab abstract methods also. And non abstract methods also. But whichever, whenever a class is extending an abstract class, is the responsibility of that class to override all the abstract methods, correct? Yes, yeah, so I just did the same program using interface as well as using classes. abstract classes. Okay, let's run on this and also and have a look, check. Okay, what is saying? Dot Java. Okay. And now I run it. it. Gives me the same effect. Tell me, clay. So it say hot foods clay coat recharges are one thousand. If I say grass. Okay. If I say chalk. Correct? Yeah. 
Getting the point? Understood interface thoroughly? Abstract class thoroughly? I hope so. With all the permutations? Yeah. Perfect. Okay? So I'll just uh, 